Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We ask that you help me. Jesus, I ask for help this afternoon. Oh, no, sorry, this evening. Help, 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 help from the heaven. This, this thing well, the way you want it to be taught. Help me. Help me. Bless 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 us in turn. Bless us in return. Bless us in return. Bless us in return. Amen. Yeah, so um, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so um, I want to start by welcoming everybody. Thank you so much for joining. I want to appreciate our pastors in the house, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Femi, Pastor Bukumi, and all their wives, Pastor Essie, Pastor, Pastor Bemi, Pastor Tobia, and also my wife, Pastor Stacy. Thank you, thank you everyone for giving me, for saying I'm the one that to interview. Every time I come to take this class, you know, I learn a lot. And any time you ask to take it, it's also a time for refreshing. And I'm not always bold to speak God's word like that, you know, in a sense. I depend on God to speak his word from standing in for God as a man of God. I think also they need to claim some what it means. Just on our parents and all of that. Thank you, sirs. I'm under you all for and I appreciate the privilege. Um, say everything I'll be saying under all my pastors. And also an appearance. And um, yeah, I, to access. I hope we have been blessed so far. Hope these new things have really been impacting life onto us. And I'm sure without uh, any doubt that it, it has, you know, because for me and my household, we can testify of that. And I believe. That is our testimony, and I hope that behind the scene, we are paying attention to every word that is being said, going through the notes, jotting, you know, because this is a class. This is, these are things that are very important for our future, you know, our future in God. This is the foundation. This what the sorry to say, uh, the things that we really, really call milk of God's word is actually is actually Christ. You know, so so many times I I, I want to say it again because I'm saying it with because with a lot of you know that word foundation foundation is Christ. Say there is no other foundation that should be laid apart which is laid. Before you build your house, you lay foundation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Who is ministering to me with me this evening? Is it Daniel? Is it Wesley? Who is ministering to me? I'm also, you know. Hallelujah. Pastor says he good evening. I'll help you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So I'll say something, you know. What was the last thing I said? That before a house is built, Wesley, what do we do? You lay foundation. Foundation. So if you say foundation, you see, a lot of things that has been called milk or defined as milk. In time past, I really, really not milk, you get, but, 
is is the milk of the milk. Let me just use that word. You know, you know, there is the milk of the milk. Do you get so? Those that are, praise God. Are you with me, sir? Yes, sir. Maybe if I have better words to say, it will really, really probably clarify, you know, some of these things. You know, the truth is, for me, maybe I should just speak for myself. I'm learning, I'm learning the spirit. I'm learning the word. I'm learning, you know, and most of the time when you follow when you follow Bible, you just find out that maybe, maybe because of, you know, the place we are, or I'm not trying to exalt us in any way, but I'm just saying that maybe because of the sight we are using to look at the scripture, we are able to now deduce that. Okay, actually, Hebrews 6, verse 1, is foundation, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so if that is foundation, how will the building be? Mm. You understand, you know, at times when you look at some of these things, you know, a lot of times when you see, when we start to teach, you wonder like, ah, this thing is tending Christ, is moving towards something deep, eternal judgment. We are seeing people looking at deeds. We are looking at works in foundation. You get what I'm trying to say? So we are looking at, so, but what we call milk in the body right now is one aspect of milk. Because the truth is, you know, milk, congealed milk too is meat. That's why I called it milk of milk. Yeah. Yes, you know, congealed milk. And don't forget that milk is brought out of meat. Yes, sir. Right. So they milked something out. It was milked out. So it's a it's a form of meat that a baby can take. It's also meat, but it's a kind of milk that is watery meat. Mm. It's milked, it's milked out of something meaty, very large meat, and then they brought out some watery part of it so that the baby can develop to be able to now partake of the real meat. meat. Amen. 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 So let's read from Hebrews, Hebrews 6. Around and 2. Just read it again. Hebrews 6, verses 1 and 2. It says, yes. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. So it means that when you say not laying again, meaning that that foundation has been laid already. Yes, sir. Right? So it means that repentance from dead works is a foundation. Mm. Right? And it yes. has been laid. You say they should not lay it again. Is been laid. So don't lay it again. Go on to perfection. Go up in the building. Leave foundation. So if one start to talk about foundation, foundation start from repentance from the work. Yes. Right. So when you say works, dead works. Works that are dead it means that soul must turn from that works. So a soul that is learning how to turn from that works is laying foundation. Foundation is being laid. Or when this doctrine is being taught, how to turn away from dead works. Right. So let's continue. And of faith towards God. And of faith towards God, mm -hmm. of the doctrine of baptism, doctrine of baptism. and of the laying on of hands, of and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. So, so what Pastor Bukumi 
Pastor Ceci, Pastor Femi, has been teaching us is our foundation. Right? Yes, sir. And our foundation is, it encompasses all of these things. I'll be all encompassed. I'll be how will I use that English? Like, is all these things. Mm -hmm. Right? So, is, is foundation of repentance of, from dead works, faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and, sorry, resurrection of the dead, and then of eternal judgment. Of eternal judgment. So this we will do if God permits. Mm -hmm. So all of this now, so if I have all of this as a doctrine in my soul, as a doctrine that guard my soul, my living, what have I been able to achieve? Uncle Wesley. Um, you, you've been able to lay the foundation in your soul. Lay the foundation in my soul. And, but all of this is something, is Christ. Mm. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Because Paul told us in the in book of the Corinthians that there should no other foundation be laid. Oh, that that's right. First Corinthians 3, 11, right? Say, so for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is what? Christ. Jesus Christ. So we can say that all of those things you read for us now is Jesus Christ. Hmm. Abby? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So he now said, let us go on to perfecting Jesus. Hmm. So, sorry to use this word, there is an imperfect Jesus. I know that people might start asking me questions now. Well, Pastor Jeff will answer it. <laughs> I'm not causing trouble for my pastor. So, praise God. Let's mm -hmm. make any sense. Because if, if Hebrews 6 1 now says, let us go on to perfection, not laying again. So, all these ones that we have laid. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because, you know, sorry to do this, just because it thought flashed me before I came for this meeting. You know, like, it's just a thought, you know, just spiritual things like it happens like that you just want to minister and then you know spirit starts start marinating over you you know just flying mm -hmm. thoughts you know. so he thought was just like if the foundation is like this mm -hmm. you get what because i've gone through this thing over and again and then i'm wondering if this foundation is like this how will the building be what is the expectation of God's building? Or expectation of God about his own building? For him to take time to lay this foundation. Are we not supposed to thank Jesus, you know, yeah. for, for laying such, meaning that the, the, the house, uh, Wesley, it will be solid. Yeah. If the foundation is this solid, because this is solid already, you know, a lot of Christians, this is what Paul, uh, P, John was saying. After they finish laying foundation, they will say they don't have sin anymore. Paul yes. John said, it's not that you have no sin. You lie, you know, because there is, you have done faith towards God. You <laughs> repent, dead box. You get what I'm trying to say. If we say then that we have no sin, we lie, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not it. So you see that place of sin, you know, that this whole foundation has not taken care of what Satan has done, sir. Huh. It's just the beginning of what would take care of, of, 
or undo Satan completely. It's not like Satan has not been taken because the site has been cleared, foundation is laid. But if you leave the house like that without building it, Satan can still come and take over that place and destroy the foundation. Do you understand? It's not like you get on trying to say it's not like Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let me leave all of those things. So before I go into my class fully today, I want to ask one person. Okay, last week we we had um, you know lots of conversation. What really blessed us? Who can tell me what was the thing that stood out for you? You know, sorry that I started on that note. I just wanted to pass that thought across and then for us to just continue to think on those things and like, you know, God's expectations of, of us is so high, massive, big, enormous, awesome, you know, and we should aspire to, to go on to perfection. Just like Hebrews 1, Hebrews 6 verse 1 was an admonition in the Hebrew church. So, so that being said, you know, let me leave all of those thoughts. I just felt like I should just drop it there. Sorry. Um, Wesley, can you tell me what stood out for you last week? And if anybody wants to talk, you can just raise up your hand. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Uh, that you want me to, did you save me? Yes. I oh, okay. Um, I, for me, I guess it was the entire, the entire teaching. Uh, but I really, really was blessed by the way you broke down. You know the parable of the talents. Yes, sir. That that um, that really stood out to me, and um, because you were able to communicate the importance of every ability mm. like you use that we receive and um but you specifically said from the Lord. Mm. Yeah, because we can like you, you know, you were you were saying how you being able to, for example, play football is mm. an ability, but is not received from the Lord, is not so the abilities that one can receive from maybe you know parents or environment mm -hmm. or you know mm -hmm. maybe you go to school and you learn something, but there are also abilities that you receive from the Lord. And I believe one of the examples you used was if 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 someone can repent from dead works is an ability, something like that. And and mm -hmm. um yeah, so you I was really blessed because. He said that every everything, every ability that we get from the Lord, we have to use it because we will be judged mm -hmm. according to what we do with them, with every single one of them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sir. Leslie, were you sure that you understand that? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure, sir. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Any other person wants to? So, yeah, go ahead. Damian, Daniel. Um, hello, sir. Sorry. Go ahead. Hello, sir. Um, can you hear me? Clearly. Okay. So I think I was blessed by everything Wesley said and the parable of talent. I don't think I ever understood it, you know, the way you blessed us until last week. Um, and you also took some lessons from that second Corinthians where Paul was talking about them being a piece to, um, 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 epistles written that you're talking about the writing by the spirit and not with the ink and and that's how they actually give you those gifts you know those talents um or those capacity is the spirit impartation and that's really what the spirit wants to do and you, I, I think what really stood out for me not to say much is that what you 
the talent you have is the one that has entered and sat in your heart. Mm. And if you don't have it, I mean, you can know it in head knowledge. And, and but if it has not sat in your heart, then you don't have the talent. And that one is, is actually spirit that rises with our um on our heart and that's how we receive that capacity that talent which you called many things you can be you can see it as grace you know if they have given you grace like like you were talking about um last week if if we have received the grace then we have to um work in that grace that mm-hmm. i think the word you used that really shook me um I, I don't know if i remember it but um what will be rascals or will be as those that cast our pearls to the swine if we have those grace we're daily loaded with grace from all the daily ministration and yet we are not able to walk in them we'll be like that last that last servant that you know they don't use this talent so i think i know the topic was internal judgments but you you broke it down in a way that you know um the the reward at the end you know was clear i understood it very well and I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Any other person? One more. I can take one more, and then we go to types of intervention. Okay. If there is no any other, let's go. So today we'll be looking at two types of eternal judgment. So two types of eternal judgment. So there are two classes of people living or that have lived upon the earth. Believers and unbelievers, the just and the unjust, or the righteous and the unrighteous. Upon these two classes of people, eternal judgment will be categorized as revealed in the scripture or in scripture. Two kinds of eternal judgment that will take place are one, the white throne judgment. Number two, the judgment seat of Christ. So what did I call it? The white throne judgment, A, and then the B is what, Wesley? The judgment seat of Christ. Thank you. So we have two types of eternal judgment. There will be one white throne judgment, Second one is judgment seat of Christ. So the white throne judgment is the judgment seat of punishment where the ungodly will be judged. The ungodly includes the unjust, wicked, unrighteous, and unbelievers who disobeyed the law of God as spelled out for them according to their dispensation. These laws can be categorized also into two again, but I want us to look at this white throne judgment. You know, so Revelation 22, verse 11 to 12, and then we'll look at Romans 2 again. No. So let's start with Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Mm -hmm. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And be holy from verse 7. From verse, verse six. Read verse six. Verse six. And he said unto me, This saying are faithful and true. And the Lord of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which, which must shortly be done. Be done. Continue. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Mm-hmm. Verse 8, continue. Okay. And I, John, saw this, these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, 
I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. things. Then, then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. So you see, so there is a judgment here, it is a giving of reward based on works. Right. He yes, said, so Behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me. And then to give every man according to his works shall be. Verse 10 of that same chapter says, And he saith unto me, Seal not the things of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Then he began to declare that those that are unjust because of time, right? He said, they should, he said, let him be unjust. So at this point, is no more, is no more preaching or there is no more repentance. It is just for you to remain the way you are. Do you understand? <clears throat> Praise God, uh, Wesley. Yes, sir. Do you understand? So they are not begging you anymore. This is not. This is not, there is no more appeal. They are not appealing to your soul anymore. They are only saying, remain the way you are. Because this is a season of reward. I don't mm. know if you get to what I'm saying. So it's not like you are a man. Amen. Now, so this is, these are talks or words of judgment. When you stand before judge, it's not the time for repentance. Amen. Do you get me? So Amen. when you go to God, for example, and you stand before judge, yes. uh, oh more inside. That's not a time whereby you say, Oh God, don't worry. I'll see me, I've changed right now. As I am right now. That's not when they talk about change. So uh, that's the season they say, just remain the way you are. And mm -hmm. evidence or show your works or your the 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 exposition of your work, when they expose your work, then they judge you based mm. on it. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? So it's not a season of dialogue as it were. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, so white throne judgment, according to this book, it says it's a time of, to judge the unjust. But when you look at it here, you see that also, if you read verse 1 of Revelation 22, he said, show me a river, pure, a pure river, right? Of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So you see, there, this was a tronic thing. Yes, sir. Uh, that's what I just wanted to show from that. But it's a tronic operation. That's why it's white throne judgment. So as at that point, the two judge hmm. or judges, let me just, that's the right word. You see that word, God and the Lamb. Um, at this point, you are going to be seeing those, those are the operation of the of all the light. Hmm. So all the light for judgment is seated at, at that time. So there is no point of, so the day they, they sit, so what they say is proceeding out of the throne of God and all of those things are, 
uh, you know, you can read on and say, you know, they talk about cost. There should be no more cost, no more. All of these things are operation of, it says, in the midst of the street of it and either side. I don't want to go into this. But let me just, I just want to establish something here from that first one. But if you read that, uh, okay, verse 3 says, and there shall be no more cost, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and the servant shall serve him. You know, there, there is verse 5 I want us to read, verse 5 to be precise, yes. It says, and there shall be no more night. They need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light and shall reign forever and ever. Yes, yeah, so so you see that the light there is the light of the Lord God. Yes, sir. So when you say Lord God, what does that mean, Wesley? When you say Lord God. You don't have to know it. If you don't know it, there's no problem. If you do, you can try. If you do, fine. I'm not. I know, sir. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 sir. See, please go ahead, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. I feel you know it. You are just trying to be humble. Well, no problem. So, so Lord God here, Wesley, are you with me, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, so Lord God here, is if you read Genesis 1, Genesis 1, you will see the difference between this God and the Lord God. Oh, yes. Let's see Genesis 1, verse 26. I think I've spoken about it before in one of the one of these classes. I can remember verse 26 says, And God said, You see here, let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So it's God that said here, but go to Genesis 2. Or let's go to Genesis 1, verse 1. Verse 1. 1, 1. So, Wesley, read it for me. In the beginning, In God. beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I want you to say that word, God. In the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven God, and the earth. Created, but we can see this operation is God's operation, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's move to verse 26 again and read it for me. And God said, Let, let us, and God said, so it's God that said here. Now let's go to Genesis 2, verse 7. Yes, sir. Four, yes. Verse, yes. Four. verse four. Verse four. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. They were created, in the they were created right? In yes, the sir. now continue. In the day that the Lord God made earth and the so heaven. You see, the operation of the Lord God is not creating, is making. Yes, sir. So you could see here that when they said Lord God, they now began to use the word made. Mm. So this one is more engaging. Hmm. Do you understand? Read verse 7. You yes. see. And the Lord God formed. Oh, you see what he does. I don't want you to go fast. Don't be too fast. And the Lord God did what? Formed. Formed. So he made. Then he yeah. formed. You see the way he does things. When you read chapter 1, verse 1, you see the created. Chapter 26, created. God created. This one formed, made. Mm -hmm. Look for another Lord God. He says, he says, and the Lord God formed the man of the dust, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became what? A living soul. Right? Now, Look at this one again. Read Genesis 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted. Planted. I like the word planted. You see, so you see the word made, formed, planted. Yes. How can you categorize those words for me? Any English students here that can give me a very good categorization of that? Okay. 
or what's, what makes it consistent or Wesley, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, Action sir. Words. Thank you. Thank you. So what 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 do you think, uh, Wesley? I want you to say something. Sorry that I'm using it. This is how it's flowing today. It's I just... know, it's okay. um, I was just I don't know if any okay, but anyway, sir, for me I see um the operation of the Lord God is more mm. um you know it's not them just use the word is not creation which is once it's growing it's building so you see that the bible is very intentional yes sir you get and it takes the eyes of the spirit to be able to see some of these things you know like god has to help us to Amen. see so when you hear Lord God giveth them light in Revelation 22. Does, mm. does it strike a chord now? Mm. Yes, sir. Light is a light for judgment. Is is the this it says, and they shall reign mm. forever and ever. So what makes them reign is what they were given. That and the word he used here is giveth them, meaning that he wasn't he didn't give them once. Yes, sir. Uh... You understand? Give it them. It's 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 as a result of his comings to them. Hmm. You understand? So what they are building them for was for something that is everlasting. Because if you hear the word, then they shall reign forever okay. and ever. So the giving of the light is for dominion, everlasting dominion. Yes, sir. Amen. Is it making any sense? Yes, sir. So after all of that operation, they now say, let them that is unjust, because there's nothing more to give. Mm. They've given everything for to, for to make you just. So if you are still unjust, <laughs> okay. then it may so, because there's no light for you again. Amen. Amen. Uh, and we don't found great mercy. At times, I just look at some of these things like, ah, this is great mercy. What kind of mercy? And you know what? They didn't say we are going to get it anyhow, Wesley. Hmm. We are going to get it by going for meetings. At times, sometimes, when you read Bible alone, you won't see all these things that we are saying now. You just read and pass. Hmm. Even when you try to slow down, you are not seeing anything. <laughs> I don't know if that has happened to you, but I open Bible and you wait on you are waiting on Bible. Once in a while you just break open for you and you are shouting, Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. But sometimes you will just be dear, my God, Ashwala Bala. You even if you pray Ashakato, Eshialaga, she 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 Open it, open it. <laughs> you just find that when we gather like this, they just break one bread like this. Does it multiply the good? Mm. God they multiply the good. They feed everybody. They feed no stop. We still pack baskets. A lot of time when you listen to Pastor Jeff, Pastor Femi, Pastor Bukumi, you just say pack basket, they go out. Uh, you understand? That is when they say in Nigeria. That you went to a party, you chop and then you pack go else. You understand? Yes. You see that one. So the next one week again for two, three days before you go for another meeting. In Yoruba, they call it a jail to kill you pack go out. Like you get. So the giving of light is in the gathering of the saints, is is great mercy. The saints must gather. You understand? So yeah. amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. So, so you see the judgment. They said, let's think that's because they have given light already. And that was why it now said in verse 6. Verse 6 now says what? Read for me. And, and he said to me, that me. Beings are faithful and true. They are true. They are faithful, full of faith 
and true. Continue. And, and the Lord, Lord God of the holy prophets prophet. sent angel to <laughs> show his servants the things which must shortly be done. So what are the things that must shortly be done? He is the giving of his life he is so that they will reign, they will have dominion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's the Lord God that does that thing. You see, in Genesis 1, it was also the same to Genesis 2, sorry, it was the one that did the short work that the Lord, the God already declared. Hmm. You understand? He was the one that came down and began to do the work. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You saw him here. He said, the Lord God of the Holy Prophet sent his angel. He's still the same one. Now I said, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keep it. Sayings of this prophecy, of this book. Let's go on. I, I don't want to. Revelations at times is very technical. And, you know. Yeah, sometimes the reason why some of us never went to revelation in our life was because the Bible said that anybody that had to this book. He <laughs> 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 said, I testify unto you, every man that heard this word of this prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto it, if any man shall add unto, unto this thing, or unto these things, God shall add. Unto his play, the play on that are written on in this book. And if any man, verse 19, shall take away from it, from that day we just close this book and say, Bye bye to you. I'll stay with uh, Matthew to, to Jude. Thank you very much. <laughs> You thank God for our daddy and we kind of deal you. Yeah, God used to open this book. This book would have would, would have never been open. Like, like it. <laughs> As the people would just be extracting things much more from jail. Carry it and just tell you. And run away. You know, but the eyes of the epistle could show us this book and we thank God for it. So is a tonic thing. I just wanted to establish that that judgment of the word is a tonic thing. But there is also God has already done something before that judgment. Why true judgment? He has given light, and that was why I wanted to just let us see that. Does it make any sense, uh, Wesley? Yes, sir, it does. It does. Awesome. Awesome. So. God already did something. He gave light. And then after the giving of light, then he said, because anyone that has received those light have allowed the formation of the Lord God. It has, it, that person has allowed what God promised from the beginning. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So image and likeness is the, is the two two. Is the two properties of judgment. Does that make sense? Or two things for judgment. Let me use that word. So when you say the tablet of the stone, two tablets. Mm. The first tablet is image. Second tablet is likeness. Image and likeness. So what makes God God? There are two things. The brightness of his glory. And then the express image of his person, that brightness of God's glory is his likeness. Hmm. Express image of his person. Do you understand? So those two things are the light of the throne. Those are tronic light. Hmm. Now, any man that doesn't receive those, eh, I don't know how best to say it. At times, I'm very scared of the words of Jesus. It scares me. Because Jesus will tell you, be perfect, even as my father. He didn't even say as he is perfect. Hmm. As my father that is in heaven is perfect. I don't know if that's scary to you. But yet, you see Jesus say to somebody by him, a thief, and say, today you'll be with me in paradise. 
But yet, he will tell us that we should be perfect. Amen. Amen. And then in this place, he will tell you, if you are unjust, be unjust, because I come with reward. Now, let me ask you a question. Somebody that went to heaven straight on the day Jesus was dying, will that person receive reward? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, because that person, if he says, he says, this reward is for, he said, to give to every man according as his work shall be. That guy that died that day, mm. he doesn't have works yet. He has yes. a... I don't know, maybe you get what I'm saying. Yes, sir. So that person, still, he will be judged still. He will be in maybe New Earth, some kind of place. But I tell you, it would not be in places mm. that people that ask work will be. It's not possible. Yes. <clears throat> Do you understand that? So this reward here is a praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So is this reward is with me. I like the word with me. That word is it the reward is with me. So there is a reward that is Jesus that I will give to every man according as his work shall be. Because the the end product of that work is what will determine the reward that you will receive. Yes. Do, do you understand? So this reward is with me. I can tell you that this reward is him. In some kind of form. But let me leave it. Let me leave that thought. Let's read. Let me let me buttress the last scripture. Let's read uh, Romans 2. Let's read Romans 2. Are we blessed this evening? This evening? Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, let's start from verse 1. Romans 2 from verse 1. Mm-hmm. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, man. whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. Continue. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth so against. We sure. Yes. Abby, we are yes. Very, very sure. We are sure that the judgment of God is according to what? Truth against them which commit such things. Right. Continue. And thinkest thou this, O man, that mm-hmm. judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Mm-hmm. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? Mm-hmm. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasureth up unto thyself wrath again the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory. Glory immortality and eternal life. Now, before we go on, hold on. I want to show us something here by the message, by the help of God. It says, who would render to every man according to his what? His deeds. Meaning that when you say, why throw judgment? This is a deed kind of judgment. So when you say render, this render too, what does it mean? Um, Wesley, maybe you can help me so that because I'm not a very good English student, but I'm trying. Uh, so I see 
based on what your teachings are, I see that render as give according to. So render is more like give, Abby. Yes. Render. Give, yes. You can say reward. Yes. Right? If, it, if anybody can get another word from me, I don't mind. So, yeah. There is a place that says provide or give. Another one says supply. Or the word furnish. Mm. Do you understand? So, so when you say render to every man. So one thing I see here is that when you say that word white throne judgment, that word white, mm. it, they are going to judge based on true, the tronic light, which is a white operation. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So it's a is this thing is is a garment. Hmm. So it means that anytime hmm. I do righteousness, I'm sewing a garment. Hmm. So that garment is deeds. Amen. Amen. So that is when you now appear, when you appear before the Lord. There will be no, I don't know how to put this. Way. There will be no, you, you, know, you are not going to be trying to say, uh, maybe there will be no lie. You can't lie. <laughs> you know that the judgment of this life, as in the judge, as in currently now, like, for example, some of us are from Nigeria. We know what's happening in Nigeria right now, that we have a government that got there you know, in a way that people feel, <laughs> you know, people feel this is unjust. And the other part is going for, you know, judgment in terms of, you know, but we know that they can prove him wrong with all manner of lies. Hmm. Do, do you get, like, we still have lawyers that can lie, INEC, with uh, what the, all manner of things can happen that will make it's in all connect, even though we all know that it's a lie. But they can still win. I'm not saying they win. We pray they won't win by God's grace. But even if amen. they win, amen. <laughs> even if, because the way it is, is Nigeria, right? So Nigeria can surprise you. You know, <laughs> because the truth is, let me tell you, even if God has a will, man can upturn God's will. God yes, needs to carry out his will on it. You don't know. Yes. It's in the Bible. No, that one is another story. The other. So people can change, you know, except if God now goes, you know, like, ah, uh, I don't want to use the word that came to my mind, but, you know, but, but I'm saying that Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that, you know, so, but in that case of earthly judgment, it's possible to, to mm. make it with lies. Yes. So with words. But this kind of judgment is not going to be like that. You will not stand with, before God with your mouth. You are going to stand before God with your deeds. Hmm. Meaning that for everything I do, there is a record. Do you hmm. understand? And that record is the garment that you are sewing. So when they say white throne judgment, immediately you land and your garment is not white. You just know where you belong. You understand that kind of thing. Does it make any sense to you? Yeah. So, so when you say, who, who, who will render to every man according to his deeds? 
is just that you are not going to be, they are not going to render anything to you based on what you say. Mm. Or what you would tell them that uh, happened. That's why when you read that verse one, verse one says that inexcusable. So there will be no excuse. Oh man. So you understand. So you will not say there will be no amen. Nobody will excuse you. Hmm. Yes. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So the judgment is based on. So if you quickly start judging yourself now, you will not be judged. So how do you judge yourself? You judge yourself according to truth. Do you understand? So, knowing fully well that the true standard is very high, so you have to continually put your put your gaze on truth for judgment. Okay. Amen. So that you can so right down. It. This thing, eh, this thing should help us. What I'm saying this evening should help us adjust our heart. You see, all this repentance from there is not just teaching. It's not that pastor. Pastor Femi just wants to teach and excite us. You know that kind of thing. Maybe he's doing his own ministry. No, there is nothing like that. If I want to be anything in this group, I want to be listening. Hmm. Because even teacher, they say our own kid is true. Is true. They will judge you for what you have done in your flesh. And then they will now judge you for what you say that you did not do. You, so <laughs> it's, it's a very big one. And every time I think about that, I was like, oh my God. So if there is king that they are going to flood people, just know that that's why you have to pray, pray for us, you know, pray for your pastors. And all. Just know that, you know, like you that you are listening and you are doing, they will judge you one time. The people that have thought, they will judge them twice. Because they will first judge you according to what you did. And then they will judge you according to what you say that you do and you did not do. So I uh, people that are very quick to answer pastor, I pity them at times. Like even me, I pity pastors, even as I'm a pastor. I pity myself. You get like, oh God, just help me. Because you know why? Because you can say things even under the anointing. Amen. Like, Amen. It's so solid, strong things under the anointing, and then you don't even have any. The Bible talks about Jesus that began to do the things that he said. He didn't start to say them first, he did them. Yes. And then he starts saying them. So, do you understand? I'm just trying to emphasize what the white throne judgment is. So, is it judgment? What did I call it, Wesley? A deeds judgment. judgment. Yeah, so it's a judgment according to deeds. God will render to every man according. Thank you, Elaine. Deeds judgment. So, so the more I obey God, the more I get ready for that true judgment. That's why you will see here that they didn't say that this white throne judgment, when I read it, they said, it's those that disobey God, God, God that this judgment was for. Mm. It wasn't for those that obeyed God. Because you've passed that judgment as you are living righteously. Do you understand? What, you know what I mean? P-A-S-S, you passed. Yes. Why that you passed? So let me let me continue or let's read this place finish. Maybe we can just glean some things again. At seven. At verse seven. To them who by patient continuance in well doing. Well, seek, see the word now. So these people are doing well. Doing well, yes. For glory. Continue. Seek for glory and mm -hmm. honor and immortality, eternal life. So this reward here is eternal life because of what they are seeking for. Continue. It says, but unto on, on them that are contentious, contentious, 
do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. I'll go back to verse 7 before you continue. Go back to verse 7. I saw mm -hmm. To them who patient continuance in well doing seek for glory and mm -hmm. honor and immortality, eternal mm -hmm. life. So this one we can we can we can dovetail it with that place that says, let him that is unjust. The same thing we did, verse seven and verse eight. Mm -hmm. Let him be unjust till. Let him that is filled be filled still. Right? He that is righteous be righteous still. And let him that is holy be holy still. Verse 12. Behold, I come quick. Then I come quickly and my reward is with me. So what is the reward that is with him? He is eternal life. Uh -huh. Because of what they are doing. That word, be righteous still, be only still, is what separated them, is what they are seeking. Mm. Where did you understand that? So what yeah. they seek, what they are gazing on, is what separates them. So that's yeah. why he's saying to them, remain that way. Mm. Stay like that. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Praise God. So, you, is it making any sense? So, let's go back to that Romans 12, two. You see, just to compare it. So, so we can say, my reward is with me. So, what is his reward, Wesley? Eternal, Eternal life. Eternal life. So, what is eternal life? That's the life of the throne. Of course. And the Lamb, yes. You understand? Eh? Eh, thank you. So this is the chronic life. And that's what he's going to give to them. So, but that throne too has wrought. He yeah. has indignation. So you see, there is no option for for the you cannot you cannot have the double standard life mm. in this part. It has to be one thing you are focused on. Let's continue verse 8. Uh, I think we are in verse 9 now. Yes. Um, I'll just read. Okay. Verse 9. Well, okay. tribulation and anguish okay. upon every soul of man that doeth evil. So of this means something. that You see the reward first will land on somewhere. Where is he mm. going to land? Soul. Soul of man. The soul of man. So this soul of man is what will wear the garment. Mm. Right? So this is where we are either white or we are black. Let me use that. Sorry to, to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? So it's either you are dark in your soul or you are light. Mm. So upon every soul of man, they didn't say every man, yeah, there's a soul of man that dwells in you. Meaning that who do the evil in the soul. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Continue of the Jews. What? Of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to so the Jew. We can also say that this is also to every soul of man. Soul of man that's yeah, worketh. That work good. So meaning that the soul can wear glory. The yes. soul can honor. The soul can wear peace. These are rewards that Jesus has. With him. Continue. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. See that word respect of persons. 
is that is according to how you do. That's what you get. God will not be, he will not do past here. He's not a judge that will say, ah, because I like this person's face. Do you understand? Yes, sir. No like of, like of face, there is no bribery, no bias, yeah. thank you, nothing. There is no, there is no that I even come, you know, I like, ah, see, it's me that Pastor says he likes the most in fellowship. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like, ah, Pastor Jeff loves me more. Or Pastor Femi, I am his favorite. His deeds. Hmm. They understand. So if you say, for example, you say, Pastor, let me not even go there. Let me go there. Let me, let's go. So does that make sense? So for, there is no respect of persons with God. So, um, then he began to talk about nature and all those things. But let's leave it. Have we been blessed this evening? I hope I'm not too slow. No, so you have been very blessed. Amen. I just feel we should just look at even me. I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm also understanding this whole thing as I'm teaching it. You know, so he says the white throne judgment. So we can see that what makes this judgment unique is a deeds judgment. I want us that away from this this part if that's what we take away today i want us to you know look at it so is it this judgment meaning that for everything i do i am sewing up a garment either white or black both to the jew or to the gentiles is our soul this judgment is a judgment that that records the record of everything that we do is is what they judge hmm. or what they use as well first of all you know we saw in revelation that they've given light for they've oh, given God. light from lord god to raise a people yes it says yes an everlasting people they that shall reign forever so the Lord God gave them light. So this light would happen. It's already happening. So this one is happening right now. And you know, and yes. what we are calling for is judgment. As these teachings are going on on the earth, what we are calling for is God's judgment. That we are because God is making the people ready so that God can judge the earth and judge the heavens. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. So the judgment seat of Christ. Let's move on. I want to go to, okay, let me go to, I'm still on the white throne judgment, sorry. So the white throne judgment has something. It says these laws can be categorized into two also. So there is what is called the law of conscience. And then there is the law of Moses. And then there is also the gospel. So the conscience is the seat of judgment in a man's soul that helps him to know good or evil, good or bad. Sorry, my daughter, she's sleeping here and she's just coughing. Okay, so it says this will help us to know, like you help the man. He says the judge, the, the conscience is the seat of judgment in a man's soul that helps him to know good or bad, so that he can do that which is good. This is the law that God placed in every man. The major code of this law is faith. Those who disobey the law of their conscience to the utmost 
will be eternally punished. So the law, these laws are faith, mercy, and judgment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Read for me. So you see the, the conscience, you know, when you let's read it first before I, I explain. Let's read Romans 2, verse 12 to 15. Okay. Romans 2, verse 12 to 15. For as many as have sinned without the law without shall the law. also perish without law. Mm -hmm. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, mm. but the doers of the law shall be justified. Mm -hmm. For when the Gentiles which have not the law, do mm -hmm. by nature the sure. things contained in the law. These, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also in oh. witness, and their thoughts in the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Read that 15 again. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing <laughs> one another. So read verse 16. In, in day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according, according to my gospel. Do you see that? So let's 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 see it one after the other. Amen. Are we blessed? Do we like this teaching? Yes, sir. Very beautiful. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being patient with me. I don't want to rush it at all. <laughs> I'm trying to take it small, small. Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's read. Let's we'll come back here. But I want to say some things now. But I want to say them so that I can just be using them interchangeably. The way we looked at uh, why children judgment, and then we established it very well. That's a deeds judgment, right? So now under why throne judgment, there is what's called the law of conscience. And that's what we want to also we are looking at. So let's read First Timothy 1, verse 18. First Timothy 1, 18 and 19. And then read 20. This I charge. This charge, I commit. this charge I commit unto the son Timothy, according to the prophecy which went before on thee, that, that thou by them mightest war a good war. Verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. So, so what shipwrecks faith is... Is, is when a man does not have a good conscience and is not holding faith, right? So holding faith and a good conscience, which have been put away. So it means that people can put away faith and conscience concerning faith. Because if you see when I was reading it, I told you that it is this law of conscience the major code of that law is faith. Meaning that when you are being taught faith, is the giving of life that, that raises judgment or that raises your conscience or that makes your conscience good. Mm -hmm. I will explain. This is a little 
جین هم با یه می توانیم کنیم Praise God. Sorry about that. Praise God. So, 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 what was I saying? I said, Odin faith and a good conscience, which some have been put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. So, what is the good conscience? So, when you are being taught faith, or when you are being taught, when you are being taught. Christ, or it's not just Christ. Then. Every faith in in light. Amen. Amen. Let, let me let me bring it down. So every faith, eh, raises this your conscience. So do you understand what I'm trying to say, Wesley? So meaning that faith. Sorry, conscience does not work better when there is no teaching of it. Mm. Because your conscience will be would only use a law. Mm. A law that he knows. Mm. You know, so conscience can use law of sin on them. Do you get what I just said? Yes, sir. And it will look good. It's not, you know, it can take the good of, of that law. Let me show, let me give an example. For example, do you know that some people, because while we were being raised those days, like when you were in scripture union and all of this stuff, they will tell you that if you wear trousers, that you are sin, you are, you've sinned. You know, those year, that year that, you know, Trust that was a sin, this was a sin, that was a sin. If you do this, you have sin. You know, all of those kind of things. Mm. For ladies, you know, and all of those things. You know that that thing, if it's taught soul over time, if the soul puts it on, mm. the soul just so the conscience is activated wrongly. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So we can begin to, so the soul will just be like, and that conscience will just be like, anytime my, my conscience is just judging me. Have you heard that before? For example, I heard about a woman that came to Canada and it was in, she was in Nigeria and then she said she would never wear trousers. And then she was the minus spot the outside. With... <laughs> and they took hospital after like maybe 25 minutes because the leg was almost gone <laughs> so this woman that started preaching to everybody that uh, it's not a sin honestly <laughs> <laughs> so she has a new message for people so <laughs> so that's why the that was my experience the conscience <laughs> job. <laughs> uh, mm. did you see that? So experience can adjust conscience. Mm. 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 Yes. So, uh, experience. so so it means that what raises that seat of judgment is the kind of law that is given to that place. So you have a good conscience when you are being taught rightly. Mm. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. In that place, then, according to the law of faith, the law of faith, mercy and judgment can sit rightly in your conscience and will be executed well. May we not be taught wrongly. Amen. Do you understand? There is no way, if you are taught wrongly, you will shipwreck faith. Or shipwreck defeat. Gong, gong. So that's why 
for the for the white throne judgment, this law of the conscience is very important. Now let's see. Let's see that place that we read. It said, for as many as sin without law. Yes, shall be judged. Right. It says, shall also perish without the law. Verse 12 of Romans 2. Yes. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in, in the, the law. law shall be judged by the law. So you see, so how are they going to judge the people without law? Hmm. They, didn't, they didn't spare them. Yes. So there must be a law. Hmm. You, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Because if there is no law, then there is a law. Yes, yes, sir. Do you understand? Because the law of sin too is a law. It's a law. So that law that is not available is what is perishing the soul. Mm -hmm. uh, the law that is not available for the soul to anchor on is allowing another law to work so that soul can perish. perish. Does it yeah. make sense? Yes, sir. So he said, and as many as have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. So you know the law. You sin in the law. You have the law. You sin in the law. Then there is a judgment. Meaning that. So what they judge by is law. Mm. So that was why I now said verse 13. Read for me. For not the, not the hearers of the law are just before God. Yeah, God. But the doers of the mm. law shall be justified. Now be justified. So you see, so the giving of the law is for what is for justification. Mm. But when they give law, they are not expecting law to remain in our ears. Mm. Uh, law must move our legs. Do you understand? So, and then by before law can even move our legs. It must activate our conscience. Mm. Do you understand? So, because when your conscience is activated by the law of Christ, praise God. Hallelujah. Then judgment can begin within the soul. Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah. So you have something for judgment. You see that conscience is the seat. That's a throne there. Mm. Being light. So anytime you want to turn, light shines from your conscience. That's how faith can stand and remain. Mm -hmm. So there is a law person. There is a judge on the seat. There is a judge. You see that law? Oh God, I've seen something in my spirit. This is beautiful. So you see that counselor is in your conscience. He can say, anytime you want to turn, he just activate the law. Pa, 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 pa. Mm. The conscience is very powerful. You don't say, ah, I can't do this thing. Ah, my conscience, ah, my conscience is not aligning. Ah, you know, ah, that soul is very healthy. Soul. A very healthy soul. That your conscience is alive. No, it's alive with the law of the spirit of life. That's what I'm saying. Hmm. Wesley, does it make sense? Is it making sense? Yes, sir. So judgment is available. And as, as long as that thing is there and left, any minute, when laws are, when, are, when these things are laid by the spirit in the soul, eh, an activation of your conscience, just, that man will live as a righteous man. Hmm. He will live righteously. When you have good conscience, ah, may our conscience be good. Amen. Amen. So what is that person going for? Justification. Because anytime you have a very good conscience, in no time you will be just. Do you understand? Because you will be doing law. 
No. Yes. Because your conscience is alive. Your conscience is checking you. Is based on so. How do we raise conscience, uh, Wesley? By first of all, getting <clears throat> based on Timothy, you get faith that can change your conscience, and you do you do them. Yes, sir. Where you so, exercise your conscience in doing what is right. Yes, so the giving of light is what makes conscience good. Yes, sir. Do you, do you understand that? So, and then the more you do good, the more good your conscience becomes. Yes, sir. Yeah. And then Ellen said something here. Yeah, she said, conscience keeps light. So it keeps light for judgment season, for to judge you. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, you know sir. how your conscience work? You can tell me how your conscience work, right? Each and every one of us know. At least the little you know, you know something. Ah, my conscience is pricking me, you know? That's what conscience does most of the time. Yes. Pricks, tells you. you know? So it's not all the time that is the only ghost that comes yeah. to tell you things. When they raise you, you know, your conscience will talk. Are we blessed? Yes, sir. So the law of Moses, too, is part of the things that they would use to judge some people. You see that word, law, law. That law here in verse 12 can be, because if you look at it, He's talking about both Jews and Gentiles. You know, there was a time my daddy was teaching this thing, but there is law, where you say law in the law. You know, the Gentiles don't even have a law. Yes. But later it was God used Paul to let us see that there is a law that is not even without, that is within. Hmm. Because even in this place, he said, for when the Gentiles, verse 14. Yes, sir. When the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature. That word nature here. How did they get, how did they get a nature that can do law? Hmm. Knowing fully well that they are Gentiles. They do by nature the things contained in the law. He said, these are not the law. So what law is he talking about here? He is the law that was given to the Jew. Mm. Do you understand? But he said, they are now a law unto themselves. Meaning that the law that they are living by is a law within. Mm. You yes. understand? This law within is better if you are obeying if you are obeying the law without, no problem. But make sure you obey. Do you understand? But this one, you cannot see. They don't have any law. But they've done all your laws. Is it which show the work of the law written? I like the word written. In their heart or hearts. So it means that it says which you the work of the law written. So this one is a sign that something was written in their heart because by nature they were doing law. Mm -hmm. yes, which is better? Which is better? The law that is by nature. That word nature there we can say divine nature is also like that. Mm. You understand? divine nature that divine nature is is from key, the giving of the incorruptible seed yes so so how were gentiles able to get to that point because something was already seen by the spirit and their conscience also bear witness and their thoughts 
and their thoughts the meanwhile as accusing or else excusing one another. In that day, in the day when God shall judge secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Continue to read the first. Are we blessed this evening? Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm a bit slow. It's a very technical, a very technical side of um, the Bible. God, God is helping us. So let's see um, the second law here. The law of Moses, the degradation of man. The degradation of man. So the degradation of man made the law of conscience weak. Mm. And almost voiceless. Mm. Do you understand that? So, yes. and gave the children of Israel. So, God had to give the children of Israel the law of Moses for worship and moral life. Normally, you know, God wanted to write that law by mm -hmm. calling them up to Sinai. Yes, sir. In their heart. Yes, but they would not take it. Yes, sir. So God has to devise, devise another man, brought Moses closer, wrote the law upon the, 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 the two tablets. So the two tablets, we established that those are the, that's the image and likeness. So, so what God was giving to stone is mm. his nature. Mm. Amen. So God was giving stone his nature. That's why that stone was well protected. Mm. So they had to keep the stone in the tabernacle. And that was protected. And then even when people stole the tabernacle, the tabernacle disturbed them. What was disturbing them was the stone in the tabernacle. Mm. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, too. So, so that's why Jesus made a statement at some point when Jesus said, "If you, if you doesn't worship him again, he said God will raise stone." God has already done it before. Hmm. Do you understand? By writing himself in stones. But don't forget that he actually called us stones. Hmm. Right. So we are supposed to be the one that will carry nature. Yes. That will carry law. So law is for something. So this is what I see. That when they raise all the compartment of the soul, the conscience, all of those places, eh, those are the place of God's seat. That's God's throne. All of those places. They are judgment seats. So when you appear before God, when God sees his laws in you, he knows that you are a throne. Because of what you carry, you have law within you. He knows that by nature, you are qualified for his throne. Did you understand what I mean? So, so, so the giving of the law physically was not enough. It wasn't what God wanted to do, really. But yes. he just to use it as an addendum, like a stopgap. So that they can, uh, the more they cite it, the more they understand. Do you understand? So this law will also be based, uh, will, will be the basis upon which God's judgments will be executed. The major tenets of the law of Moses are judgment also, faith also, and what? Mercy. Hmm. So every have been seen on the Old Testament is still the same thing. It's the same thing. But he couldn't write it upon them in the days of because they will have become weak and they can't bear it. But everything of the operation of that same thing is this mercy that brought all of that to bear. You understand? So based on this law, God will also judge men. 
So those who had no access to gospel in the church age, note, will be judged by the conscience. Hmm. The other side. So according to the law that was available in that season, that raised the, so the, the law that was available to the Jew. Amen. Amen. The Jew that doesn't have gospel or were not around in the time of the gospel will be judged also. The Gentiles too will be judged also. So yes. how are they going to judge them via conscience? Conscience. So because that time when man fell and was weakened, God still kept some things in the conscience. So according to those things that are God's own thing that were remaining in the conscience, because how do I know? If you look back, even after man fell, you could see that something was still talking to Cain. Mm -hmm. So Cain's conscience was very, very alive. He was closer. He could hear the law. He could hear God very well. Yes, sir. Yeah. So his conscience was really, really alive. He actually seared his conscience. He killed himself. Do you understand? So yeah. even after man fell and everything looks like he's really bad, he's really bad, you could still see that. In man's judgment seat, to kill a woman being is very hard. Hmm. Do you understand? So man still has some kind of things in the soul. But right now, they are destroying everything. They are, man is trying to, to kill everything. Oh, like what people are saying, that they want to start a competition for some things that you just saw. It was flying in the news of recent. All manner of things that is in Romans 1 from verse 20 and all of that downwards is as a result of man trying to kill the things that are remaining. Do you understand? Like, we don't want these things anymore. Nothing should speak. I should be able to sing. And nothing should preach. Hey. You understand? I want to sing and feel normal. Do you, do you understand? So, man, when you get to that point, you are gone. God doesn't make, God did not make man like that. Amen. 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 Is, is it making any sense? Yes, sir. So those who doesn't have access to the gospel, but now the gospel is available. I'll end it up here. So by the gospel to God is going to judge. And that's why you see there in verse 16, it says in the day when God shall judge the secret of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, according to my gospel. So if you look at, I was saying it yesterday in our meeting, I said, do we know that Paul, uh, sorry, Enoch walked with God, even in the day where there was no, where man had fallen and he was not. So God showed us something that as at that time, even when after man fell, man was not totally gone. Do you understand me? So man could still follow God Still, God took him because he pleased God. So what was pleasing God in that soul? Even though the spirit was dead. Mm. So there was something in that soul that God kept there. And that thing was still activated. And God was pleased with, with Enoch's work. So, but the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ has been established. And this, the first two dispensations are before the gospel. Do you get? So, the first two dispensations I spoke about the law of conscience and then the law of Moses. But I also said it in such a way that it can apply to this present time because the conscience itself. Is still intact now. 
Now, God is now raising conscience now. But in time past, we had conscience. God kept things in conscience that Satan couldn't totally erode. And yeah. that's what of faith, mercy, and judgment. You see those three things? They are things that God kept in the conscience. That for those that didn't listen or didn't, we are now available in the days of Jesus. Or didn't have opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus. They will be judged by those things. Hmm. Yes. Sir. Do, do you understand? Yes, sir. So, and then God will also judge people by the law of Moses. But Paul also heaved it that people, some people, the work of the law were written in their heart and by nature they were doing the things that are in the law, even though they didn't have the law. Yes. Me, I'm interested in those ones. Who are these guys that were able to hack the law with their soul? Amen. Amen. So he says the first two dispensations are before the gospel. In the age, in the church age, some had refused the gospel and some others will still refuse the gospel. This set of people will be judged by the gospel. So in the in the church age, we'll, we'll be judged. We will judge everybody. Mata, mata. Everyone that has heard the gospel that refused it will be judged by the gospel. So God will not use the law of conscience or law of Moses for those that are under this dispensation. The current dispensation. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Like what people will always say, I'm a good man. I'm a good man. I'm a good man. There's nothing like that. I'm a good man. I'm a good man. I didn't do anybody bad. I remember my dad in those days telling me, I'm a good, I'm a good man. If I didn't do anybody bad, I'll get to I'll stand before my maker, my brother. That's in my now work. Hmm. It's not about just being a good man, just being a good man. You need the gospel. Let's finalize. First Corinthians, uh, second Corinthians one verse seven to nine. Read that for me and then second Thessalonians. Thessalonians, sorry. Thessalonians. One verse seven to nine. Right. And and to you who are troubled. Should I read from six or just seven? Okay. Um, okay. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. You can read from six. You can even read from five. All right. So which, is a, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing, with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Last night. Who shall, be who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So we see here that he says, in flaming fires, taking vengeance, was it, on them that know not God. Know not God. So you see, so knowing not God, ignorance is not going to be an excuse. I don't know, does not, I'm, I'm a good guy. I don't know God. I don't know the gospel. says, and that obey not the gospel. So it's not, it's not even enough to understand the gospel. You get what I'm trying to say? I'm not obeying it. Yes. So every instruction the Lord is going to be giving us in this season is for, for escape. You get so every time God gives instruction, 
is for yesterday. I don't want to go further. I just want to stop there. You know, I want us to thank Jesus this this evening. I want us to I want us to pray for ourselves. Just to feel pray. it's a very it's a very tough, you know, zone that the Lord will Lord Jesus Himself will help us to be obedient children. Obedient children to the gospel. That will be by nature, we will do the things that are contained in the law, are contained in the in the tablet, you know, in the name of Jesus, in the gospel, the things that contain Jesus will strengthen us to be disobedient children in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray lastly that the Lord will help us to patient continuance that would seek glory, honor, and uh, immortality, then eternal life. In the name of Jesus, that our eyes will not, will not shift gaze from yeah. our from sure. what we're seeking. In the name of Jesus, that our gaze will not be shifted. Our yeah. gaze will not be shifted from life. Our okay. gaze will okay. gaze unto, unto everlasting, unto eternal. We'll okay. gaze. We'll gaze on you, Jesus, as you, as you release life, okay. as you release the life of our dominion. Jesus, Tabarabakato, as you release the dominion life, the tronic life, the Lord will do them in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, one of the strength of Satan is, uh, sorry, one of the brag of Satan is that in this time, now nobody will do God's will. Mm. That's what he wants to achieve, actually. He wants to sell that idea so much that people will not do the will of God. But, you know, but if people would do God's will, you know, and God will strengthen our hearts, he will strengthen us, he will strengthen our feet, he would help us all, help us all to arrive safely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for help. Thank you for our trance. Thank you for our entrance. Thank you for the delivery. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for judgment. Thank you for faith. Thank you. Thank you for raising us. Thank you for moving us forward. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We stay away the land of the enemy over our soul. Over our souls, over our souls, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.